In this video, I'm diving into the experimental and incredibly powerful realm of Chrome flags, settings tucked away inside Chrome that can massively boost your privacy, security, and overall browsing experience. Now, before we proceed, here's a word of caution. Chrome flags are experimental. While I've tested these thoroughly and found them to be beneficial, enabling too many or targeting the wrong ones without knowing what they do can cause instability. But don't worry, if something breaks, you can easily revert any flag to its default state. We'll start with the must-enable flags that offer immediate benefits, and then look at some advanced options for the tech-savvy or security-focused users. The first one is Extensions Menu Access Control. This flag completely overhauls how Chrome manages extension permissions. By enabling it, you'll see a new, cleaner extensions menu. It clearly indicates which extensions have access to the site you're visiting and allows you to toggle their access on the spot. This means more security, less guesswork, and easier troubleshooting when a site misbehaves due to an extension. A particularly helpful addition is the ability to disable all extensions on a specific site, which was previously impossible. Next, we have signature-based integrity checks. This one works in the background, giving web content the option to require cryptographic verification, especially helpful for content loaded from CDNs. If supported by the website, it adds an extra layer of trust. Since it only activates when needed and doesn't interfere with browsing, it's a smart flag to enable. Now let's talk about two flags that deal with scam detection, client-side detection brand and intent for scan detection and client-side detection show scam verdict warning. These leverage local AI to assess if a site might be phishing or scammy. While I couldn't get them to trigger during testing, there's zero harm in enabling them, they only help in spotting shady websites. Local network access checks is one of the most powerful flags for securing your home network. When this is enabled and set to the blocking option, Chrome will ask for permission before a website can access devices on your local network. That includes Reuters, NAS systems, or smart TVs. It acts as a strong barrier against malicious probing of your local environment. Even when using known services like Plex, you'll get a prompt before access is granted. Another useful flag for privacy is to enable noise for Canvas readbacks in incognito. I recommend setting this to disable in all browse modes. It disrupts fingerprinting techniques that use HTML canvas rendering to uniquely identify your browser. Adding noise makes your fingerprint less unique, making it harder for websites to track you even when using a VPN or incognito mode. Bind cookies to their setting origin scheme ensures cookies set over HTTPS won't be sent if you access the site over HTTP. This helps prevent sensitive cookie data from being intercepted on insecure networks. It's a huge step up in securing your browsing sessions and should be enabled by default. Now onto some more advanced flags. First, bind cookies to their setting origins port. This takes the previous flag a step further by binding cookies not just to HTTPS, but to the specific port on which they were set. While great for isolation, it might break some sites that legitimately use multiple ports, so test it out and disable it if you notice issues. Partition Alloc with Advanced Checks is a deep memory security flag. It enhances how Chrome allocates memory, making it harder for malicious scripts to exploit buffer overflows. While some sources say it can reduce performance, I didn't notice a slowdown. It's worth enabling if you're focused on security. Now let's talk USB. Automatic detection of web USB compatible devices should be disabled. Web browsers can access USB devices, and while this helps with specific hardware, most users won't need this enabled. Disabling it prevents potential abuse while allowing cameras and microphones to function normally. Similarly, enable isolated web apps to bypass USB restrictions should also be disabled. This flag would let some isolated apps skip over USB permissions, not something most users want. Disabling it adds a layer of control and security. Another great flag to consider is Disable Subframe Process Reuse. Chrome already isolates different sites into different processes. This flag takes it further by giving embedded subframes, like ads or third-party widgets, their own processes too. It improves security but may slightly impact performance. If you value isolation, it's a solid trade-off. 
for fingerprinting defense, enable fingerprinting protection blacklist in regular browsing. This limits access to certain fingerprinting resources, mostly third-party content. It's unclear which resources are blocked, so monitor if any essential sites break. Another fingerprinting flag worth enabling is reduce accept language request header in JavaScript navigator languages. This removes some of the language information sent by your browser, reducing uniqueness and helping avoid being tracked. Last but not least, enable the deprecate the unload event. The unload event is a legacy JavaScript trigger used by sites when you close a tab. It's outdated and prone to abuse. Chrome is moving away from it in favor of modern techniques, so disabling it boosts performance and avoids shady behavior. If you can't find some of these flags, don't panic. It may mean the feature was either removed or integrated into Chrome directly. Google constantly updates Chrome and phases out flags once they become permanent features. To find any of these flags, simply type chrome forward slash forward slash flags into your chrome address bar. Use the search bar on that page to look for each flag by name. Enable it using the drop-down menu beside each one and then relaunch chrome to apply the changes. With these flags, your chrome browser becomes not just faster, but significantly more secure and private. These are powerful tools, just remember to keep track of what you change and only enable what you understand or need. Also, I'd love to hear from you, did you enable all of these? Which ones worked well for you and did any of them break something unexpectedly? Drop a comment below so we can all learn from each other's experiences. If you found this deep dive into Chrome flags enlightening and valuable, please hit that like button, share this video with anyone looking to level up their browser security, and of course, ring that notification bell to stay updated on all our latest tech and security content. Remember, this is just one piece of the puzzle. On the end screen right, you'll find a link to my previous video where I covered the essential privacy and security settings you should change in your Chromium browser, a perfect starting point before diving into these flags. And on the left, another video that dives deep into the universal Android debloater tool. This video dives into the Universal Android Debloater, a powerful, free, open-source tool designed to remove all the unwanted bloatware that comes pre-installed on most Android phones, without requiring root access. In this video, viewers will learn how to reclaim their phone speed, free up storage, and even boost battery life by removing apps they didn't even know were running in the background. It walks step-by-step -step through connecting your phone via ADB, and safely uninstalling without affecting essential functions. I will see you there.